You know, let's pray. God, I want to thank you so much for this morning. I want to thank you for this, this privilege that we can gather together as a family. Why don't I pray for this word? I just pray that, that you will speak through me clearly, concisely, with truth and love. We thank you so much for this beautiful day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good to see you, Doris. I'm going to start off with a story. And then as I share this story, I think some of you will know who I'm talking about. If you've grown up in church, you will know who it is. If you do know the name, you can just shout it out and you'll get a, an extra Ferrer Rocher from the back. So basically, this, this person, he, he was a miracle baby. All right, he was a miracle baby. You know, his parents couldn't have kids. His parents couldn't have kids for a long time. And one day, an angel came. An angel came to the mom. You know, along the pathway, the angel came and he says, and says to the mom, you know, you will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor. Right? You know, she's saying you can't cut his hair. You don't, you don't cut his hair. He's going to be, because the boy is to be a Nazarite, dedicated to God from the womb. Dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. From the hands of the Philistines. You know, at this time, they were about, the Israelites were about 40 years into captivity, you know, with their enemies, the Philistines. So they're 40 years, and they've kind of been dis- disillusioned. They've kind of lost hope. Um, and, and suddenly, God sends to this barren couple, a son, a miracle baby. So this son, you know, who was it? Very good. Yes. Um, Samson. And the thing with Samson is that, you know, we, we all know that he was blessed with great strength, like physical strength. He was blessed with great physical strength, but he was also blessed with great speed. He was like a combination of Captain America or Superman that he can't fly, but also great speed. Um, you, you know, you guys should read the Bible. It's pretty good. Um, it, great speed because he, at, at one point, he caught 300 foxes. Right? How fast do you have to be to catch 300 foxes? And not only that, he tied their tails together, put a torch on their tail, and set them loose onto the fields of the Philistines. He was a bit of a, you know, a bit of a prankster. Um, so he did that, and they, they got so upset. They tied him up. He broke free. You know, he, he had so much potential, right? He had so much potential at a time when, when Israel really needed it, right? And then there was also a point that, you know, we, he was given so much strength that he, it says that in the Bible that he, he, he struck down a thousand men. He struck down a thousand men with a donkey's jawbone. You know, it, it's shaped like a tomahawk. Can you, can you imagine how, strength it was, how strong he was? Um, and he had so much potential. He had so much, um, you know, he had so much purpose. There were so many things and so many people counting on him. But the thing is, when you, when you think of the word Samson, you think of another name. What is it? Delilah, right? And the thing is, you know, we, we kind of look at Samson and we kind of couple him with Delilah. And so many times, when it, when it comes to personal tragedies or personal like moral failures and whatnot, we kind of sum them up into to like a summary of, of a failure. Like, like for example, um, you know, if, if I say the name, or I won't say names, you know, you, you think of, you kind of summarize them up into that overnight failure. But we, we know that there's no really such thing as overnight failures. You know, there's always steps leading up to a certain point. True? You know, I want to read Judges 16 verse 1, and, and it, it kind of kind of shows us how it led up to this point. Judges 16 verse 1. I'll read it for you. One day, Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. So we thought, oh man. This guy had so much potential, so much going for him, and he, and he blows it all for a moment of, you know, pleasure. But the, the thing is, you know where, where he was? You know, Samson grew up in a town called Zora. Samson grew up in a town called Zora, and from Zora to Gaza, which is about, it's about from here to Gold Coast, right? There's no ride share, so he had to walk. It's about, say, 65,000 steps. From Zora to Gaza. You know, he had to walk 65,000 steps, step by step. You know, he had 65,000 chances to turn back. 
isn't it? You know, last week we started talking about, you know, starting, starting small. Two-minute rule. Small, small reps lead to big steps. Amen? Small reps lead to big steps. And, and the thing with, you know, with, with Samson, he, he, even though he had so much potential, you know, he just took step by step in the wrong direction. But at the end of it, you know, we, we know God still used him, right? God still had his grace and God still purposed to use him. Um, you know, so, so no one, you know, kind of to summarize, you know, no one plans to wake up one day with like a huge credit card bill. No one plans to wake up one day with, with um, you know, health or relational issues. It, it, there's, there's always steps leading up to that point. Um, you know, the last week, you know, the, the first week we talked about when it comes to habits, we're talking about, you know, Jen mentioned we're in the third week of our series called Patterns. You know, building habits for good and for God. Building great habits for good and for God. And today, we want to talk about stopping or breaking bad habits for good and for God. You know, the first week we talked about how it's not, not just about the doing, but it's about the who. The who before the doing. You know, when you are born, you look like your parents. When you die, you sometimes look like your habits. All right? And we know that from last week. Who started something last week, by the way? Besides Jen, thank you very much. Um, you know, who, who started a good habit? You know, for me, I did. Um, you know, I have this habit, bad habit, uh, since we're family, I'll share it. I have this habit of um, laying my clothes everywhere when I change. So this week I said, you know what, I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going to pick up one item. Just one. All right, next week I'll do two. I don't want to go too far. Um, you know, the art of showing up, the art of not procrastinating. So this week, week three, if you're writing notes, the title is Life by Design. Life by Design. You know, what is one habit that you're wanting to break? What is one bad habit that you're wanting to break? Um, last week we said, you know, why is it so hard to get started on great habits? And why is it so hard to break bad habits? True? Why is it so hard? And the simple answer is, it's just how, how God has wired our brains, you know. With, with the thing with bad habits is that the, the payoff is now, but the pain is further down the track. And the thing with good habits is that, you know, you, we have a bit of pain now, but the payoff is a little bit further away, okay? So God created our brains to be, in a way, protective mechanism. And the verse that we've been reading is, you know, you know do not conform. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, Romans 12 verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, I want to I pause right here a, a little bit, you know, before we kind of go on to the mechanics of it. You know, the renewing of your mind. You know, a lot of times when we, when we kind of do something and we kind of mess up again and we go, God, God, sorry, you know, I, this is just me. This is who I am. I can't. I can't stop spending like this. I can't, it's just who I am. It's who you built me, right? And you, you kind of talk this over your head, talk this over yourself. But the powerful thing about the mind is that sometimes it, it can't distinguish between imaginary or what is actual. So if the thing is, if you keep repeating all this negative stuff, it reinforces your actions. And this is why this, this, this verse is so powerful, you know. It, it's just do not conform to the pattern of this world. Say, do not conform. Turn to the person next to you and say, do not conform. Yes. To the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right? Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen? You know? So the thing is, when, if we, when we do mess up, I want us to, to, to renew our mind. Renew, reset. Think back. Remember, like, okay, God, you've called me for a purpose. This is not who I am. You've given me a hope and a future. I've messed up, yes, but I'm sorry, Lord. And this is, this is where our faith aligns with his promise, amen? You know, guess it, in Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You know, so, so our negative beliefs can oftentimes you know, kind of reinforce our negative actions. And our actions, and again, will reinforce our negative beliefs. 
You guys getting it so far? I feel I'm speaking really fast today. Hallelujah. So today, so based on, based on who you want to become, what is one habit that we want to break? Based on who we want to become, what is one habit that we want to break? On a spiritual side, you know, what, what is one habit that is stopping us from becoming who God wants us to be? You know, what is one habit that is stopping us from becoming who God wants us to be? You know, I, I, love, this, I love this quote by um, Pastor Greg, Craig Groeschel. He goes, you can't defeat what you can't define. So today, even when I ask this question, what, what is one habit that we want us to break? You know, we kind of need to acknowledge it. Like, say, with Alcoholics Anonymous, the first thing that they do is they acknowledge that they have a problem. You know, so we kind of need to acknowledge um, what we want to break, right? So James 1.21, Good News Translation. I don't think we have that. But it, it says, so get rid of every filthy habit. Say, get rid. Get rid of every filthy habit and all wicked conduct. Submit to God and accept the word that he plants in your hearts, which is able to save you. You know, that, that, that is a powerful verse. Um, so what are some common bad habits? Do we want to make it interactive? Emmanuel, what's a one bad habit? Social media, very good. Um, you know, some of us could be, I was going to say could be on Depend, but no, I'm not. Um, you know, eating, spending, right? Some of us could be, some of us could be digital. You know, some of us could be emotional bad habits like complaining, or always picking up the negative stuff. You know, some of us could be the habit of of just worrying. You know, that is a bad habit. You know, we we know some friends, or maybe not some friends, but we know of people who whose habits have become addictions. Yes. So how, how, do we, how do we start to break these bad habits? Or how do we, you know, share with someone? Uh, and the thing with, with that is that if, if more than one person, guys, this is important, if more than one person who loves you tells you that you have a problem, it might be worthwhile to listen. You know, if more than one person that you trust tell you that, you know, you might want to look into this. It's a good, good time to, to listen, right? Amen? You know, last week, we, we, we talked about the, the habit cycle, about, you know, the cue. I've got a picture there, actually, Jen. Um, and it talk, we talk about the cue, how habit starts. It starts with a trigger. It starts with a trigger, and then you get the, you get the, you get the cravings, right? It starts with a cue, and you get the cravings, and then, and then you, you get the response, which is your action. And then you get the reward. So how do we stop bad habits? How we started good habits was that we wanted to make it obvious. We wanted to make it easy. So the only way, or one of the ways to break bad habits is really to make it invisible. Take it away. Um, I'll give you an example. I've, I've, got, I've got two fridges at home, okay? Two refrigerators. One's in the kitchen. And one is in the garage, right? The old one we put in the garage. I know that if there's an ice cream in the kitchen, which is close to me, and, and Jen is smiling because she knows, if, if I know that there's ice cream in the kitchen fridge, I would always go for it because it's so close. But I know that if, if the kids, or when Jen packs very, very wisely it in the garage fridge, it's very unlikely that I would go for it. Because it's out of sight, out of mind. It's out of sight, out of mind. This is, this is what I want to talk about today. It's like life, you know, life by design. You, you kind of design your environment. Um, and make it hard. Make it hard to remove. You know, one of the best things that I did on my phone was I deleted all, nearly all social media apps. You know, the thing is, sometimes it's just so easy to pick it up, and it's like muscle memory. You just go straight to that app. And the thing is, if you just delete it, 
And I, t I can tell you now, it saves so much time. My excuse used to be, uh, uh, I need it for work. I needed to post stuff. But it's a terrible excuse. Okay? Um, Proverbs 4.14 4, to 15. Proverbs 4.14 4, to 15. You know, it says, enter not into the path of the wicked. Enter not into the path of the wicked. And go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. All right. Not like pass away, pass away, but like pass by. Okay? Enter not into the path. Like he, he's saying, don't even go near it. Just avoid it. Okay? You know, for some of us, what are our cues? Once we recognize this, I believe it'll be very helpful. And this is something that I guess, you know, we can all share with, with our friends or family. So some, some cues can be places. Some, some cues can be people, people that trigger us or tempt us. Some could be wrong place, wrong time. You know, in the parenting course, uh, we've been learning about times of vulnerability, like for kids. But I think it's, it's, it's also uh, relevant to us. It talks about, you know, the acronym HALT, H-A-L-T, H-A-L-T. You're most vulnerable when you're hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. Right? Halt. We, we are most vulnerable when we are hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. Sometimes it, they all come at once, isn't it? And so if we recognize this, and we recognize that when sometimes when we're in these positions, you know, the cues or the triggers, they seem more um, effective. And this is such a powerful key. I'll tell you a story. Um, in 1971, 1971, 1971, um, they, they did a research. You know, 1971, they did a research on all the American soldiers that were in Vietnam for the war. And they found that, okay, so, so the war at 1971 was about 16 years already, right? So they did a research, they found that about 20% of the soldiers were addicted to heroin. American soldiers in 1971. And, and the thing was, back then, back all the studies said that you can't, you can't break heroin. It's just too much of a, a habit and addiction. And all the studies said you can't, you can't really break the addiction of heroin. But what they found was, when the soldiers came home, when the soldiers came home, you know, they found that up to 9 out of 10. Okay, I'll give you the stats. You know, they said 5% when they came home, they said that 5% of them became re-addicted within a year. And 12% relapsed within three years. So in other words, right, approximately 9 out of 10 who used heroin in Vietnam, who used heroin, eliminated their addiction overnight. And all it was was because they found out that it was just a, such a big change of environment. It was such a big change of environment. You know, back, you know, if they were in Vietnam, all, a lot of their people, a lot of their, um, you know, fellow soldiers were using it. You know, the stress of the environment, the, the, the weather, the, the, the stress, the anxiety, you know, the war, the, the killing, it, it all just, it, they were all triggers for them to start using heroin. But when they were removed from that environment, when they came back home, they were away from all those influences, and they found that they could stop. You know, for us, sometimes we just need to be aware of the places that we're at, the time, the people, the cues, and remove it. And what they found was, they, they were, they were kind of amazed why, why the ones that went to rehab didn't work. Because they would go to rehab, they would get clean, but then they would go back home, back to their environment. And all the triggers were all there. You guys get it? So yeah, interrupt the action. No one, no one plans to fail, but you can plan not to fail. They did a study as well to... to with people who they thought had a lot of self-control, right? And people who had le lack of self-discipline. And they found that actually they were not that different. 
It was just that people who they thought had more self-control knew how to design their environment so that they were not tempted. It was just a matter of, you know, it's easier to have self-control when you're not tempted by certain things. True? That's why, that's why I love that verse. He goes, enter not into the path of the wicked. Say, enter not. Do not enter into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away, pass by. Renewing your mind, amen? And I want to kind of kind of wrap up by, by saying, you know, one thing, one thing so powerful and one thing that's been in my heart is, is not to give up meeting together. You know, we've been talking about habits, we've been talking about things to do and, and not do, but one of the important things is really not giving up the habit of coming to church and fellowshipping. That is so powerful. And, and um, you know, there's, there's, there's a couple that, that, that used to come, right? And, and after a while, after a while, they, they started not coming to church. They started saying, oh, you know, so one, one thing or another will come up. And after a while, they, they would slowly say, oh, they feel bad coming to church because they haven't been for so long. And then after a while, it's like, oh, they just, oh, we just watch online. And, and, and you know what? And the sad thing is, the more they isolated themselves, the more trouble started happening at home. And the devil knows this. He goes, once they can isolate you, you're easy targets. Once the devil can isolate you from community, from family, from people who you trust that will speak into your life, that you allow people to, to reach in, that's easy targets. And the, sad, and the really sad part about that story is that the couple is no more together. Right? And, and for, me, that, that, for me, that breaks my heart. Right? And, but you know what? Accountability is so powerful when it comes to things like this. Amen? Not just for you, for our kids, for, for our friends. For each other. That's why, that's why it's, it, it's in God's pattern. You know, when we talk about patterns, you know, one of God's pattern is, a, is, is community, is family. Amen? True or true? True. You know, one of God's pattern is family. You know, that's why we have the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know, I, I love the fact that we can come together, but the, the fact that we can um, really spend time, talk to each other, talk into each other, and that's the powerful key about church. Let's stand. I want to stand. Let's. You know, we, we talked about, you know, in John 10.10, 10, he goes, he came to give us life, and life abundantly. Amen. You know, Jesus came to give us life. And in, an, in, in, a, in another translation, he goes, a rich and satisfying life. You know, a rich and satisfying life is not just everything will be smooth sailing. Everything will be easy. That everything will be handed to you on a plate. You know, the, for me, the idea of rich and satisfying life is that you appreciate it. The things that we do like through the hard times, through the good times, we appreciate it. You know, you, you, you reap the rewards. When we sow habits, you reap way more than what you sow. And this can be good habits or bad habits. You know, we'll reap a lot more than what we sow. Um, a rich and satisfying life for me is, is, is through the hard times, through the discipline to the short-term pain now, but you see the rewards later. You know, one analogy I had... Um, a few weeks ago was, was I noticed that when I'm driving at night, sometimes I still indicate when there's no cars around. Right? I still indicate. I'm like, why am I doing this? 
when there were no cars around, it's like late at night, I'm driving. Um, but it's also, and God kind of spoke to me. He says, you're doing it because it's a good habit. There might be no cars around, but your kids are in the car sometimes. And they see you. And they see you like, right, since there's no cars around, oh, forget, don't worry about indicating. It's something small, but they, they catch things. And this was such a good reminder for me that, that the things that we do, our habits, it's not really just for us. What we sow now is also seen by others. And for me, it's, I thought, oh, okay. Right? So, guys, indicate. You know, I, I, really, I really love that we get to meet. You know, for me, there's, there's, I don't gain anything from, from putting time in, in church and whatnot. But, but my heart is that to see you guys together, and to see new friends meeting. And, and, and the thing is, when we build community, when we build families strong in God, you know, it may be hard, but the payoff is big in the long run. What we sow now, as small as it is, will have a reward later on. I know this, and I know this. Lord, I want to thank you so much for your word. I want to thank you so much for your promise, and, and Lord, I want to thank you for your grace for us. We thank you that, that it is your kindness that leads us to repentance. Your, it's your goodness and your kindness and your promise that allows us to keep going. Lord, I want to thank you for, for your strength and your joy and hope in you. Lord, we want to commit this whole time. We want to commit, Lord Father God, this, this life that you've given to us, this this. this opportunity to make choices, to make wise choices for good and for you. Lord, we thank you so much for this. Lord, I just pray that, that for each and every one of us here today and for those watching online, that you will speak into us. You will give us a strength. You will, you will continue to, to, to lead us and guide us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. But we overall, ultimately, we thank you for your love, that you are with us that you love us so much, that you want the best for us and for our families and for our friends and for the world. Lord, we commit all this to you. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.